Okay, before the video gets started, I have to show you the fit. Check out this jumper. Oh my gosh. It's like a little long. I'm like 5'6". So with like some boots or some heels. Yes. So this jumper is from Trove. It is one of the items on rotation right now. There are so many things on rotation. But if you don't know, Trove is my clothing rental subscription service. You can sign up today for a 30 day free trial or really anytime. But I will put the link to this jumper down in the description below if you wanna check it out. And I will also put the video because I made a whole video about Trove um, up here on the iCard. So, Today's video is a Q&A. I went on Instagram and I asked you guys to send me your questions and also topic ideas. And I got some really good topic ideas that I wanna dive deep into. So today is gonna be a Q&A, but I'm gonna save some topic ideas for future videos. And thank you to everyone who uh, contributed to those responses. I really love these deep dialogue uh, videos. I feel like I get to share more with you. Um, I get to know, get some insight into what you're interested in. Yeah, so let's start with some of the questions. Let's just dive right into it. First question is from Ford, Ford Girl 2010. How are the kids adjusting to their new lives? And I think I got that question a couple of times. Corbin and I have been separated. Honestly, the timeline is getting a little fuzzy on how it all went down these days um but this isn't new through the divorce process we were separated we did like a nesting where um one of us was in our house that we owned um for a week and then they we would live with like our parents um we were like taking turns back and forth in the house for a little while and then we sold the house so they have been living like half the time with me and half the time with corbin for a while but i have noticed is that sometimes Juniper specifically will say something like, I've been going back and forth long enough and I don't wanna go back and forth anymore. I want it to be how it used to be. And that is always a really hard conversation to have and to just, you know, be honest with her and to sit with her and say, you know, I really understand and I'm, I know how you feel and I'm sorry and, you know, sympathizing and really like honoring her emotions and how she's feeling. And also being strong with the fact that it's not gonna go back to how it was. And this is the new normal and it's important to spend time with both mama and papa. And I know it can be really hard to go back and forth, but this is what it's gonna look like. And then I try to bring in things of like, you know, make it a little bit more positive. Of, you know, well, you get to do these sorts of things at Papa's house or these sorts of things at my house or, you know, she is a kid, so of course she loves having like two birthdays and um, two Christmases and stuff like that. So it can be really heartbreaking, especially when she brings those things up. And I, I think Tabor, I'm sure, feels similar and he just doesn't verbalize it the way that Juniper does. Um, she's just a lot more outspoken about those things and just older old enough to kind of articulate how she's feeling more. Uh, next question. This one is intense and I really, I don't have an answer for it, but I'm going to say the question anyways. That question is from Amy. Knowing when to call it quits in a marriage. Okay. I clearly cannot answer this question for anybody else. Um, a marriage, nobody knows what is happening inside a marriage, the ins and out of that relationship. I will maybe make the, make the exception of like, physical abuse or you know things like that but i'm just talking about if you feel like your marriage is falling apart or is it time to move on nobody can tell you the answer to that you have to figure that out and you and your spouse have to figure that out and that should be a conversation and something that is like really dived deeply into but on that note I can share with you, I guess, my experience on some level of when it felt like this, it's time to call this marriage quits. There's still like so many things that I haven't shared on this channel or on my, any of my socials about our marriage and what uh, ultimately led us to decide to separate and to get divorced. So it is hard to really share from my personal experience without divulging information that doesn't feel like it's 
time to be shared or will maybe ever be shared. But I guess I can speak from just like emotionally or like internally without the specifics. I remember a moment very clearly where Corbin had moved out. But I shared in my backpacking vlog video that Corbin and I had gone on a backpacking trip and on that trip was when we decided the right thing to do was to separate. And we came back from that trip and he moved out and he moved into the RV and I stayed in the house with the kids, you know? So we kind of started separating space at that time. And then uh, we kind of kept transitioning further and further into a separation and taking more and more space and really starting to divide the time of like, who's like with the kids and who's, you know, doing something else. Then there was a pretty dramatic shift. Basically, I remember him saying, I'm moving back into the house. And my whole body was like intuitively telling me that was the wrong direction to go. And that maybe that feels like I'm sharing too much without sharing enough at the same time. But I think you know. I guess is what I'm trying to say. I think deep down you know what is right and what is not right and what can work and what cannot work and what you can heal from. And it is always gonna be hard. Marriage is always gonna be hard. Divorce is always gonna be hard. Like it's gonna be hard either way. So I think it's just really diving into your intuition and what you know. Uh, next question is from I am and I am Auntie Lulu. Oh, that's a cute name. How was June's first day of school? So good, so good. I am so excited for her. Um, I can't believe she's in first grade, and she's actually in a new school. So this one will be, you know, the one that she's at for a while, and I'm really excited for her to start to like put down some roots and build some some long-lasting friendships hopefully and honestly like that girl likes to stay busy and she is so social and she gets bored very quickly so school is really good for her and I think the one struggling with it is Tabor because he's had his sister's full attention throughout the summer like they have just played and played and played so well together and so now that she's at school um he's been struggling a little bit just like wanting more and more attention and it's been nice to have some special just bonding moments with just him and I during my weeks um, but also I can't fill the spot of his sister she has so much more energy than me and she's just way more fun <laughs> she knows how to play dinosaurs and cars and whatever else they're always playing way better than I do so um, he's gonna be starting his own early learning program in a couple weeks and I think that'll be really really good for him. Next question is from Sophie Gomez. How do you feel when your kids talk about their dad? Um, I feel fine. I feel well I guess it depends on what's being said <laughs> but I really believe it's important for the kids to have a strong relationship with the both of us. I think moments I get slightly triggered is when maybe the kids will say things like at papa's we get to do this or at papa's i have this or at papa you know where they're kind of like comparing like there's their life with him and their life with me and in a way where they're saying you know it's better over here because maybe they have more toys or they get to do something else or they get to eat certain things and I don't really know what their life looks like over there. Um, I've explained in a previous video that Corbin and I do parallel parenting, so we have very minimal communication. I think we have some different parenting philosophies, so we've created different home environments, and I sometimes feel upset when they're compared even though I'm an adult and of course the kids you know besides like comparisons or anything like that I think it's fine I, I always try to encourage them to have a positive relationship with him and whenever they say they miss him and they want to call him we hop on the phone and we call him and he's their father and I want them to love him and to respect him and to 
cherish that relationship they have with him. Last question from Gaiu Mania. How is 2023 going so far? Have you achieved any milestones if you had set for this year? 2023 has really been kind of like a settling in year. That's kind of what it feels like. It feels like I've kind of like got my footing on the ground and I'm trying to rebuild my life. <laughs> and I do feel like I've definitely reached lots of goals and I've had a lot of growth. And I think my number one goal was to find my own place for the kids, which I have and I'm so 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 grateful for. I'm also still like figuring out where I want to go like career wise. It feels like a lot of exploration right now of like there's like a balance of like well I need to really figure some serious stuff out and feel really like grounded and secure and also I'm trying to create space for myself where I can like grow and explore and not like tie myself down into this box in order for me to feel super secure and safe. I guess I'm just getting better and better at riding the wave of it and feeling a stronger and stronger sense of security within myself of like, it's not gonna happen overnight and I shouldn't expect it to. Corbin and I did a co-parenting course after uh, the divorce was finalized and one of the things he that coach said really stuck with me and it was like when you're feeling anxious or you know overwhelmed to really think like immediately like right now in this exact moment what is the problem i know for myself i carry with me so many layers of anxiety of like all the things that are not totally worked out that are not perfect that i don't know how it's gonna go and i'm just like worrying about the what ifs and the things I can't control and the things that are maybe potentially going to happen that who knows, right? Who knows what's actually gonna happen? Life changes so quickly. So much is actually totally fine and totally okay. And um, I can get wrapped up in the, okay, but what about next month? What about, you know, like what's gonna happen next? And is it gonna be okay then? And it's always this constant worry, especially regarding like money. Literally my entire life, like even when Corbin and I were at our most successful point with social media and YouTube and, you know, we were not like rich or crazy rich or like, you know, we were well off and comfortable. Even then, I always had this deep underlying anxiety about money and paying the bills and i think that really comes from my upbringing because you know money was always like a struggle within my own family and growing up and so i think i've just kind of internalized that like it's just like surrounded by support and really okay and i'm worrying and worrying and worrying and i think what i've noticed is that the worry is a choice and i i need to to let it go. That's gonna be it for today's video. I I went on those little tangents on each little topic, but um, that's kind of what I love about these, is getting to, to see what comes up in these conversations through these questions that you guys are asking and um, go a little deeper. So thank you so much for watching today's video. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next one. Thanks.